<laughs> Did you have a good sleep? You want some food, huh? Okay, let's get you up. Let's change your diaper, okay? Mommy's putting you down on your diaper changing. Okay. We're gonna change your diaper. Arms, arms out, arms out, yay! Arms out, yay! Good job! Are you uh, kick, 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 kicking me? Good job. Another leg. Good job, buddy. Ready? Sit up. One, two, three. Oh, so good. You want to practice sitting? Look at you. Such a big boy. You're sitting up. Oh, oh hello. All right, buddy. Mommy's picking you up. Here we go. Oh my gosh. Guess what, buddy? You and mommy match. Did not plan that at all, but I'm loving it. Hey guys, so today we're gonna cover some of the physical therapy things that we did with Jensen starting at three months. He's now at seven months. So we'll kind of go through our daily routine and also show you maybe some of the things that we used to do. One of the things we are currently doing is we're putting a soft sock on his bottle because Jensen seems to really like soft things. This is to help him start to grasp the concept of maybe holding a bottle. Since it is something soft, he might just gravitate towards it a little bit more. So we've been working on trying to bring his hands up to the bottle and just kind of feeling the softness. That's... Oh, that was good. It's hit or miss. Knowing where to start when looking for resources to figure out the best way to help your child was so tricky at first. When we first got started with all this, Josh and I were Googling fine schools. I found one that stayed away. I ended up giving that school a call to see the best way to get started with things or any advice that they had for us. And this lady was amazing. She rattled off all of this information that I wasn't even asking for, but it was just like this information that I wasn't getting from books or online and it was just awesome. Awesome. For babies, the eyes take in about 80% of sensory information. That is a lot that they're learning from their eyes. So without the eyes, you have to expose them to all this other learning and information. For example, people that are visually impaired have to take in small parts to make a whole. For example, the dogs, even though Jensen's not really old enough to maybe grasp the concept of a dog, but feeling, oh, tail, ears, sweat nose, fur, four legs, this is a dog. Meanwhile, when you have vision, you look at an object, take in the whole, and then you break it down into individual pieces. When Jensen still had a little light perception, and we don't know how much, we just know that when we walked past the window, he would kind of flinch a little bit. So when we had that, and we knew his left eye was the better eye, they told us to face his good eye towards us when we were feeding him, so that you have that bonding experience, and then the good eye out when you're walking around, so you can kind of get the lay of the land. Another cool thing was they suggested a pink or a red light bulb for like a night light because those colors release melatonin to help baby differentiate the day and night. And one of my favorites, because we all know how much I love wearing headbands, which I'm like, oh, I got that in the bag. But if you are brunette, such as myself, you wear a white headband. If you're blonde, wear a black headband. And that will just help the contrast in your face for baby to really get a good look at your face. And lastly, one of the last facts this lady rambled off to me was that vision impaired can see red, orange, and yellow a little bit better. One of my first videos where you can see on the so back of the wall, about when changing happen. Jensen's diaper, his left eye was the good eye, and that was towards the wall, and it always seemed like he gravitated that way. So we decided to put some felt up on the wall, we did different shapes, and thought that was just maybe something he could look at. At this point, I took it down because he can't see anything anyway, but at first we were trying to utilize those colors as much as we could, and the lady said that blue is the hardest color for them to see. But yeah, so we're gonna just kind of hang out today, show you how we play, why we try different activities, and just relax. Oh my goodness, you're all done. It's burp. All right, little dude, do we start some playtime? All right, Jensen, we're gonna go to your play gym. You're gonna kick, 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 kick. This is your play gym. Got your crinkles. <laughs> Did you get some puppy kisses? Well, on his play gym here, instead of having toys dangling across, we just doubled up the loops, put them towards his side so he has more success to actually touch them. 
He just loves his crinkles. Yeah. Good job, baby. Once we get bored of one thing, we move on to the next, and we just test our luck. So we're gonna work on sitting up. Mommy's gonna sit you down. We're gonna sit. Look at how much stronger you are. Good job. Let's sit back up. Good job. Let's get you set up. And let's get your piano. Good job, there you go. Good boy. use this hand too. Let's try your guitar. Even though he just slept all night for the most part, usually the first wake up time is a very short amount of time, so it's usually another nap here. We're just gonna play this by ear and then we can go over some of the other stuff that we do with him. Good job, dude. Okay, okay, we don't need to kiss his eyeballs, no. Good job, Jens. Oh, you're almost rolling. That's something we can show. Mm. Yeah? Should we try it? Okay, not sure how cranky he's gonna be, but we can show you how we practice our rolling. I am not a pediatric physical therapist, okay? I hope I'm doing it right from what our physical therapist said and from what the video she showed us. So I'm gonna attempt to show you what we do to practice our rolling. I'm gonna prop his little elbows up like this. I'm gonna grab across his chest to his left arm like this. And I'm just gonna hold him here, Maggie, until his head drops on its own, which gives him momentum to roll. Yay, good job, dude. <laughs> yeah, let's roll back, okay? So to roll back, we then do a crossover stretch. So you cross this leg over his body, and then I wait for him to roll. Yes, you're such an expert, my man. Should we go the other way? So tuck those elbows, reach under his chest, and grab that arm and I will wait for him to relax his head down, which helps with the momentum to roll. Mm. And he's fighting it, that's okay. Come on, bud, you can do it. Oh, that was a very slow roll. Yay! All right, let's grab your feet and your arms. Rolly Polly Jensen, Rolly Polly Jensen, roll. Good job, dude. Kind of hanging out. I'm kind of thinking it's nap time. Very new to this week. Jensen's been pushing up planking and rolling a lot, doing what looks like he's wanting to crawl. It's different every time, but he's getting pretty successful at it, even though he sometimes doesn't roll in the proper position, according to our physical therapist. He cheats, I guess, by sticking his booty up in the air like that to get the momentum to roll. Yeah, you gonna push up? Good job. So the last thing we'll try before we go to the crib is maybe swinging for a little bit. Sometimes he really plays in here for a long time. And mommy's gonna put you in your swing, okay? Swing, 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 swing. Good job. You got your crinkles and your soft puppy. We'll see how this goes, see if he'll play for a little bit. If he starts to sleep, we'll take him to his cribs and then I'm gonna try to get a workout in. I had him doing tummy time when I was trying to do some light meal prepping. So I was in the kitchen, we didn't have any noise on and I think he just was really kind of taking it all in and he was so content out here. And I know it is a good practice to have a silent time to have them orientate to the sounds that they're hearing around them. It's definitely getting a personality and it has exploded in this past week and it is so exciting. I'm loving every minute of it and he's asleep. So I'm gonna try to transfer him to the crib and attempt to get a workout in. Jensen did awesome. I put him in his crib and he took a nap for about an hour. He's been talking a little bit. Try to keep it down to one cup a day. I'm trying to do less than that even. It's just not going well. 
Anyway, I was able to get a good workout in for about an hour, which is like, yes, I'm at the mercy of him and how long he wants to nap. Let's go put my coffee and water down and we'll go grab him. And I'm gonna show you some other things that we used to do for physical therapy when he was smaller. You're such a big boy. Wow, buddy. You doing some planks? One of our last meetings with our physical therapist and our vision teacher and such <laughs> that we want to work on giving him time to respond to us. Parents are so quick to give whatever their kids make them happy. So when we blow on his belly, he'll smile and then we blow right away on his belly again. But we're supposed to wait and try to give him a way to communicate that he wants us to do it again. Whether that be like touching our face or stop moving or starts kicking or you know, we just have to read his cues and try to figure out what is his way of telling us that he wants more. <laughs> Who's this kicking man? You're so smart. <laughs> oh, here comes the tickle bomb. <laughs> oh, another tickle bomb. Some other things that we were told to kind of be conscious about when we place him in the crib, putting his head the same way so that he gets orientated to the noises. His window is over here and you can really hear snow plows coming through, you can hear garbage trucks, that type of stuff. Just getting orientated to the rooms and how we position him because he'll start to learn which way the kitchen is when he hears pots and pans. I bless you. Something that Josh and I have been thinking about is once he graduates from the crib or to a bed and how we actually don't really want it on this wall sooner than later we have to reposition his room to where we think we would want his bed in the future that? oh my goodness you're so cute just because they are already learning so much part of teaching him is so weird because you feel so silly explaining everything you do but they are slowly picking up on things really explaining everything we do when i take him out of here after i change his diaper we're going to talk about how we're walking down the hallway and we're going to go into the living room a huge part of that is also being consistent on what we call things so making sure we call every toy by a specific name so his caterpillar toy his crinkle toy his soft puppy very descriptive words and keeping it consistent from <laughs> caregiver to caregiver his play gym his swing and while we are doing things telling him what we are doing giving him a slight warning like i'm gonna put my hands under his armpits indicating that i'm gonna lift him up but i'm gonna give him a second to realize what i'm gonna do so he's not all of a sudden flying through the air and startled all right mr man mama's gonna pick you up not impressed all right man we're walking down the hallway oh my gosh sam what are you doing just for the purpose of showing what we used to do with him when he was about three months old i grabbed his old play gym out and then i rolled up the towel like we used to all right jensen your play gym buddy good job the purpose of this when he was so little and didn't have as much control with his arms having the towel rolled up made it a more limited range of motion giving him more success to find those toys otherwise if the towel was down his arms would fling out more to the side and then of course we also put a toy here that made noise so that when he kicked it it gave him a response he knows that he's the one controlling that noise. We have not put him in this for at least two months, so this is kind of fun watching him. Since he is in such a good mood after his nap, I want to work on his sitting up. That is kind of our biggest thing right now is working on that core string. We have a little chair here. I'm gonna put him in and we're gonna work on that. He's been doing a lot better in this chair and our physical therapist likes this chair a lot because you want their hips to be tilted forward and not sitting on their tailbone. This chair really provides a good balance for that. He used to lean forward, completely just smashing his head into these toys we are doing so much better used to put a little blanket here put it under his elbows just to help provide that extra cushion to have him sit up better but i don't think we need it anymore so i'm gonna let him work a little bit more on his core strength when trying to find a toy we like to grab his hand well on a good day better to show him so i haven't hit the toy come on over here good job good job jen you're a pro
Oh my gosh, proud mom moment. We've also been working with this ball. Find it. Good job, Jensen. Yay! Good job. Oh, we dropped it. So we're here. Sometimes when I'm feeding him, if his hands are busy, I give him a chapstick, because it's the only thing I have within my reach, and I'll give it to him, he'll drop it, and then he has gone down and found it, and picks it up, drops it, and continues that cycle. Mommy's picking you up. Another way we practice sitting up is just between our legs, just to give him enough support, but we still want his pelvic bone tilted. With our drums, we like to put his hands on him, and he can feel the vibration. We're not having it so much today. I think we're ready for a bottle, huh? We're a little cranky, our teething, so I don't know if we're having a moment. I don't wanna push him too much because we kinda go off of how Jensen's feeling. I'm not gonna make him do all these different exercises if he doesn't feel like doing it. And then the flip side to that is sometimes you feel guilty that you're not doing enough for your baby. I wanna make sure I'm doing the best I can for him. And I express that to our team that works with him. They are just so amazing and just letting you know that what we're doing is enough. Cause sometimes we just let them do this and they're like, that is good. Like this is still working. Like he's still working his core. He's still working his head strength. That is enough. We don't have to push to always be working on something. We can just enjoy Jensen as he is and not have to feel pressured to be working constantly on all the different exercises. So right now he's content. But another thing that we are supposed to be working on, we want to talk directly from the side because that's where we learn first and then it's kind of front and back. Hi, buddy. Hi. <laughs> Yeah. So we've done that before where we talk to his ear or we'll put a toy. It's so interesting what our teachers can see that I don't pick up on. I tried putting his electric guitar by his ears and we made the music go and he would just get still and he was listening to it. And as soon as it stopped, he would get frustrated and start to complain. I don't pick up on those things. Good job, kiddo. Another one is when we have him sitting up against this little chair, Jensen would start to slide one way and she's like, just kind of let him go, see what happens. He would put his arm out like he's trying to catch himself and his head kind of tries to pull the other way and that's his way of trying to correct himself. He's not strong enough to get himself back up, but he is showing signs of trying to level himself back out. All right, just due to cooperation levels, I'm gonna kind of wrap up some other things that we have done or talked about. Jensen's King teacher said that if he ever rolls like into the couch or rolls under the coffee table, the kitchen table, let him hang out there. Let him figure out, oh, these are kitchen chair legs. Oh, this is the couch. You let him explore and figure out his surroundings. As for the bottle feeding, I know we talked about using the sock, but also kind of cradling his arms closer to give him more success to potentially reach out and find that bottle. Another one is tickling his lip or his chin with the nipple before advancing it towards his mouth because it makes them want to automatically bring their hands up to try to figure out what's there, what's touching me. Okay, Bubba, there's your swing. You got that toy already, huh? And your soft puppy. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm just like noticing. Look at those battle scars. Jensen's nails are so sharp. They even have a little filer for them. I don't know how they're so <laughs> sharp. Sometimes we get real crazy and start pulling everything. At this point, we're just working on trying to do purposeful communication, trying to get him to communicate back with us on what he wants, whether we blow on his belly and he touches our face, oh, you want more tickles, and then you blow on his belly. Pairing language with activity by guiding Jensen's hand to our face and saying, oh, do you want more tickles? I know I've mentioned our team. Our team consists of a coordinator, a vision teacher, a cane teacher, physical therapist, and we just get on Zoom meetings about once a week or so, and I go over what we did last week and just working on new things. So that is the AEA, Area Education Agency, and you come up with IEPs, Individual Education Plans. Love it. I also want to celebrate 100 subscribers. Hey, I am so excited about that. Triple digits, obviously shooting for a lot more. As always, just trying to spread the awareness and let others know that they are not alone. Like our videos, subscribe, comment, tell me what you want to learn, ask us your questions. We are definitely an open book and here to share our story. Have a great week, guys. See you next time.